talking about how this stuff is happening all across the nation. I'm going to read this. It's from Nancy Stopka. This is happening nationwide. Those who stand up for our constitutional rights are ending up missing, murdered, etc., suicided, etc. And it's true. Please help get the corruption of out of our courts. Demand prosecution of negligent investigation. I've been trying. Attorney Connie Reguli is standing up for us in our Constitution. Please show your support. It is an atrocious abomination what they are doing to families slash poor families are targeted. It is unconstitutional and more importantly ungodly. Please keep her in your prayers as our faith warrior enters the battleground for us. Nancy's from Boulder, by the way. Call to action. Attorney Connie Reguli is requesting the public to take a stand and say enough is enough. She is requesting the public call the following people to protest against this travesty of justice and abuse of power. Williamson County District Attorney's Office, phone number 615-794-7275. Email DCS Customer Service, UBS Tower, 10th Floor, 315 Dedrick Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37243. Or phone number is 615-741-9701. Sorry about that. I know it's loud on your earphones when that happens. Um, or email at dcscustsrv at tennessee.gov or at tn.gov. Contact Mary Littleton, who is supposed to be head of legislative oversight, 425 Fifth Avenue North Suite, 634 Cordell Hull Building, Nashville, Tennessee, 37243. Phone number 615-741-7477. Fax 615-253-0279. Now my question is, this person's in Tennessee. Now it says this is happening nationwide, but this stuff all seems to deal with Tennessee. Is there a national number for this? All right, now this one, this will help you to understand a little bit about me and my relationship with Ken and Leah and how long I've been fighting for autistic rights, although I've been fighting a lot longer than this. I knew I was autistic when I was pretty young, and uh, you're not allowed to be. Society doesn't allow you to be. They punish you for being different. So you have to pretend to be normal all the time, which is exhausting. But this is Tina Spann. She lives in Chapel. Um, I've known her for a lot of years. Um, she typed to me on May 4th, 2015 at 6.59 a.m. That's the last time that this is her old account. That I got this from. It was the last time that I texted anything to her on that account because she never saw it. But on May 4th, 2015, at 6 59 p.m. or a.m., I typed to her My friend Leah Plunkett has a son who is autistic, but doctors are too busy arguing to make the diagnosis on specifically what he has, so it is undiagnosed. He is 12. That is not what I wanted to do. I pressed the wrong button, sorry. He is 12 and in trouble because folks think pulling on his triggers is okay. I don't know how to help. Was hoping you could message her. I will also send a request to Miss Laura. That'd be Laura Nelson. Um, like I said, I got a lot of friends and a lot of family with autistic children. And... You know, I'm, I'm trying to explain to y'all how difficult it is. It truly is. I mean, then I got the issue of people like Peer. 
Now, Brandon Ratner, we had a conversation. I recorded it, and it's here on Facebook. He talks about Pierre, and he talks about Josh both being tail chasers. Now, Pierre, he wanted to pretend he wasn't tail chasing. He uh, didn't get back a hold of me and apologized, although he claimed later that he had. He was really just a jerk. Now, he told me that his roommate was sick, and then he had to work a double, so he gave me two different excuses. Now, he didn't bother to get back to me about it. And that, you know, that's something that I was pretty used to by that point. A lot of people in Boulder had said they'd come talk to me, said they'd come visit me, and they didn't. And Pierre, he's got the gall to type shit at me like, you know, there was a dark time in my life when I didn't have anybody. I'm like, dude, you know what? You're fucking, you have companions there. Pierre, you can't walk out your door without seeing somebody that you know. You weren't forced hundreds of miles away from your loved ones. That's the thing, is that I didn't need a fucking girlfriend. There's a difference between not being able to see your friends at all and being able to go see him whenever you want or whenever the two of you can find mutual time to meet up. But that mutual time is difficult to locate when you're hundreds of miles away. Pierre, you're just like everyone else who didn't keep their word. They go, stop blaming me. I'm not, I'm not blaming you. I'm saying that the reason it happened is because of a series of fucked up events. And I was trying to get help. And yes, if you had helped, if you had kept your word, it could have made a difference. But a lot of people could have kept their word and made a difference. So when I say I'm not blaming you, I mean it. I'm not blaming you. I blame everybody. I blame myself. I blame the Bollingers. I blame the people who did not keep their word. So in a sense, yes, Pierre, I blame you. But only in part, because it took a lot of people with shitty assumptions being assholes in order for me to get this way. There was nobody in my corner. My corner. Arguing on Facebook is not being in my corner. Going to court with me. Going to the police station with me. Helping me to get an honest fucking day in court. That's in my corner. Or you could do what Katie Cahill does, which is... Talk about it until it's no longer valid. Make no effort at keeping your word until it doesn't make a difference anymore. You know, I exposed Katie Cahill for the same reasons I exposed everybody else that I exposed. What reason is that? Dishonesty. They should have come forward. The truth is more important than your bullshit. The truth is more important than your pride. These people who promised to come forward but did not, knowing that these crimes against me were being committed, well, these people put my friends and family at risk. And they don't get to whine about their friends and family being at risk because they could have made an effort to help me get an honest day in court. And I never would have had to speak out. All of these people who are mad at me are mad at me for speaking out. And they wouldn't have to be mad at me for speaking out if they'd have kept their word. Then they claim they didn't keep their word because I spoke out. No, if you don't keep your word for an entire year, and then you pretend that you didn't do it because at the end of that entire year, I fucking called your ass out as a liar, you pay attention to the fact that it took you an entire year to not keep your word. So you don't get to pretend I'm the bad guy. Now, it was kind of ironic that as I was scrolling through, I saw Tina Spann's uh, 
Facebook like I did. Because in that Facebook, or in that message with Tina Spann, I got to... I got to see Ken and Leah Plunk or Ken Wilson and Leah Plunkett, you know, in that conversation. Leah, at least, and her son. Over the shit that they had to go through, and it was hell. The shit that Leah and fucking Ken had to go through with their son, and like people pushing his buttons intentionally, just like they did to Laura Nelson's son. And he's not the only one either. They do the same thing to me. You do the same thing to anybody who's different. When people say, please don't do this. And then you do it. And then you do it. And then you do it. And you do it some more. And all these people who did that to me. Magically turn into whiny ass little pussies when I did it back. They didn't like being treated how they treated me. Why is it these people don't ever like being treated how they treated me? Why is it people want to curse at me but want to get all butt hurt when I curse back? Why is it people want to call me names but want to get all butt hurt when I call them names back? Why is it people want to threaten my life and my friends and family's lives but I threaten them back and I'm the fucking devil, right? Yeah. We're in an America full of fucking cowards. And I know all these autistic, or all these mothers of autistic children, and I tried for years to get them to work together because combined, these women are some pretty powerful creatures. Between Laura Nelson and Tina Spann, oh yeah, they're capable of quite a lot. I was hoping Ken and Leah would work together with them too. I mean, I was basically playing go-between between a whole bunch of autistic mothers who were trying desperately to find resources, and I was trying to help. I tried to help Summer when she wanted resources because she's got autistic children. And uh, Amanda Daniels and Ken and Leah and... You know, I mean, there's just so many. And I asked and I inquired, you know. But it wasn't until after Virginia that I really, really realized that I might have to get diagnosed. People were abusing me in ways that at least the law would protect me from these people. If I got the diagnosis that I was supposed to have years ago. But didn't have any help getting it. And this time I finally had help getting it. I had Tamara helping. And Aunt B And Nicole Peralta. I did the best that I could by these people. I really did. But I'm ashamed of them all. I'm ashamed of Pierre. Matter of fact, I'm even ashamed of Brandon, and he really doesn't have much to be sorry for. I mean, when he didn't keep his word, it was different, because he let me know. Not like Pierre leaving me hanging for three days when he said that he was going to show up. That's the thing that pissed me off, is that Pierre had told me that he would listen to me. I went to Boulder. And I saw him one night, and he insisted I take his jacket. I didn't want his jacket, but he just kept on insisting. This Me having this jacket was like the most important thing to him. Like, if I was to take that jacket, it would be like getting his fix of fucking heroin or meth. And he told me he'd come and see me the next day at Starbucks. And I waited for him because he asked me to. And he never showed up. I literally tried my hardest to try to get some help with this. I mean, to be punished without judge, jury, or any of that. You know? I mean, that entire year of 26, or 2017, being judged 
being punished, being assaulted, having my life threatened, having my friends and family's lives threatened. Yeah, that bugged me a lot. Why wouldn't it? I couldn't even take care of myself. I can't physically defend myself. <laughs> of course, you start injecting me with drugs, you might realize that that was a bad idea. That was a wrong idea. And it's probably not a good idea to do it again. I should have never been assaulted. These places should have had full-time dedicated cameras with audio so that they can't pretend because the evidence is there between their faulty memory or their biased memory, their biased recollection. I'd rather believe the camera, but I'd like to believe the camera from its entirety. If you're going to beat him on a man for 20 minutes and then turn off the camera when he swings back at you, or turn off the camera that whole time, and then you turn it back on when he's fucking struggling because he's scared you're going to beat him to death and go, see, 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 he needs to calm down. Nope, he doesn't need to calm down. He's doing the right thing. Zade Atkinson, when he stood up to the Boulder Police Department, was standing up for our rights. Just like Colin Kaepernick taking a knee. I'm never going to stop talking about these people. I'm not. See, if they didn't want their uh, stuff all out there in public... Maybe they should have paid closer attention. <coughs> I laid out the ground rules a long time ago. And from time to time, I remind people of those ground rules. Do you know why? Because they keep forgetting. If you don't keep your word, I'm not obligated to keep mine. That's why Shelley Campbell's name is out there. That's why Danica Garner's name is out there. That's why Pierre's name is out there. That's why Derek's name is out there. <coughs> it's why Katie Cahill's name is out there and Shannon Alvarado's. Don't make promises you don't intend to keep. Big difference between myself and all of these people. I don't have selfish pride. I'm not afraid to admit that I did wrong. I'm not afraid to admit where I went wrong. I'm not afraid to admit why. I wasn't allowed to make a police statement about the threats and harassment against me. I wasn't allowed to show evidence. You want to talk about how great this country is? You proved that it's not. We've gotten to a point in American society where it's going to break. And you know what? I'm fine with that. If everyone's just going to die anyway, we might as well bring this pimple to a fucking head, shouldn't we? Get it over with. If I'm this big terrible monster, then put me away for life. If I'm not, come forward, you fucking cowards.